love hearing you speak, man. Love when you get into the flow and the rhythm of things. You know, something that I do is it, when I'm in the middle of, of putting out all the various fires and, and you know, just just dealing with all the things that I, that I deal with and I start to realize my problems aren't that big. When you just think about how vast and massive this, this universe is, this place that we exist in is, I realize that I'm just creating this. I, I'm doing this to myself. It's like putting a magnifying lens on my problems and my issues and what's going on with me. But when I just think about, you know, no, you know, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm making this so much bigger than it really is. You know, something, something I wanted to ask you about James is how important is what we put into our bodies? Like how, how important is the frequency and the resonance of the things well, you know that what? we are I, consuming? I really want to address just what you said first, because I think that that's really what people are going to be oh, experiencing sure, more than anything. That's why we're all really in synchronicity is about so what's really happening like just what you just said like wh what is what is the reason for that like why are we experiencing almost like a assailant in our own consciousness why would i want to destroy myself why would i want to tell myself things bad why would i want to experience anxiety why am i doing this to myself right so, so when i went through the higher vibration uh, yeah that's exactly how i did it by asking about just the whys literally the why because if we look at that that symbol, the why. Anytime you look into a corner of a wall, you see the why. And the reason for this is because the truth is when we process language, we have to remember there's a specific scripture about this in the Old Testament, which is coming from like the old stuff. Remember, the, a lot of the Old Testament is coming right out of the Sumerian tablets. So there's this part where one of the gods is like, hey, you know, it looks like they're down there, they're constructing, they're building, they're coming together. We need to stop this. Because if they keep going with this, then they're going to be able to scale the heights and they're going to even be beyond us. And then the question is presented, so how can we do this? This is actually in the Old Testament. I'm just paraphrasing. How can we do this? And then there were some suggestions offered. And one of the angels said, basically, let's do it with language. So then after that, there was a commission to go down and change the languages. And anybody who's read the Bible knows about this. And then when the people, that's what began Babel, because nobody could understand each other. So it just sounded like you were just babbling. And then eventually the people divided from each other. Now, sometimes people try to take that story literally. They actually try to imagine like a literal thing going on. And this is destroys it. That's why knowledge really locks out the profane. What's actually being said is, truthfully, you have to dig deeper into how you are processing the experience. And if it's coming through the language, which it's always suggested to us to think about this, it's always suggested to us to read about this experience that we're having. Now we've taught ourselves something because kids don't come out speaking languages. So we've taught ourselves something, languages like, you know, these hieratic and demonic script languages, they have to teach themselves that. And so what they literally do is they take a beautiful mind, literally, and they set it at war with itself. That's what language, these modern languages have done. So there's literally, because there's a logical side to the consciousness, right? And then there's an intuitive side to the consciousness. And when they're not complementing one another, just like the masculine and feminine forces, then they're at war. And so thus, then the battlefield of Aranha then presents itself. The entire text and the Mahabharata's texts are talking about the wars that go on in the mind. They're not talking about external deities. The fifth son had everything looking external and people building temples, but truly the conflicts were happening inside why they were building the temples. You know what I mean? Because it's like what's happened to us is that we went outside looking for something <laughs> and never found it because it was within. We should have never left. Even when a person thinks that they're alone, mm. you take a breath. You think breath is like nothing? <laughs> it looks like nothing, right? And like water looks like nothing. And then we'll <laughs> learn then, hey, you know, the most powerful things you can't even see. So if seeing becomes a confirmation for what's supposed to be going on, man, come on. That's the mind job. And that's why we call them masterminds. The only person that can walk themselves out of that maze are the masterminds. And the masterminds are here to walk others out of that maze when they want to. 
in the ancient traditions, they drew that same maze. So you can walk yourself out of the corridors of the Minotaur. There's a Minotaur in the middle of the maze. What is that symbolic for? The A, the first letter, the Arak, the first god, the horn god. Getting out of that whole Minotaur maze, getting out of the mines. Look at the Anunnaki tradition. It says the same thing. Oh, we sent them to the mines to mine the gold. So you got people literally in their own consciousness mining themselves, asking themselves questions they already know the answers to, confusing themselves, right? So we've been turned against ourselves. That's even how it reflects in the reality, right? Like people are literally, like you said, they jump in the elevator and it's like, it's crickets. You know, you can't come around any of me and the fam without doing a dance, get a hug, maybe even sit in a ceremony, you know, because we got, you know, that's how we work. You know what I mean? It's, <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a celebration, basically. So that's, that's what we want to restore, because when we see anyone doing this and acting the way, that way, that distorted way, we know it's just because they need love. And they also need unconditional. See, People got to understand love is now a word by itself. It's used often. It's used on Twitter a lot, Instagrams. It's used on Facebook. I love you guys. I don't even know you. How does that work? But I guess it can happen at the highest stage of your consciousness. But unconditional love, that's different. And I can even say I'm on that path. I'm on the path of learning that. Unconditional love is when there's no actual reason completely why you're doing it. Because you got to say, man, if somebody's down there and they're infected in a disease, are you at the level of faith yet that you're ready to show unconditional love, <laughs> right? We're going to test that faith. So the thing is, is that, but if you've already broke through a couple atmospheres, you can see the distorted code on the guy. You already got the insert to perfect it. It's nothing for you to walk up and to do that. So that's what I'm saying. That's the next stage for us. And, and, and it's something that we're returning to though, right? Like we have to know that this is not why it's like, wow. I mean, man, this just sounds like sci-fi. And it's like, actually, no, this was the past as technology. Like technology is not a new word. All of what we have and all of what we've been through, we now bring here into this space. And that's why I said I'm just present on earth. I'm actually here for the women and the children and the family. That's what I'm really predominantly working with now in this next seven years of, of this growth and putting in some really sound communities, blueprints, inventions and things that we already have ready. So we, we're lighting this thing up and also people can be involved. Like that's why we, we set up a system to scale up now because we're finding after seven years, finally people are like, yo, I think they talking about something. I think this dude's on to something. Let me just listen to them. I don't know though, not, maybe tomorrow, but let me see. And that's what I call it's the tap dance, because even after all of that, like I need to now get that animated. So if you're out there, you know how to do that. I now need to get that running under a soundtrack. You know, that's how it is right <laughs> now. We need to make it into like something that people say, oh, wow, vibes, hashtag vibes as we're pulling them back out of the digital verse. Right. Because remember, this is the key. And this is the last thing I have to say about just this topic. There was a statement that was made by one of the smartest mm. men in the world, and I'm not going to name any names, but the statement was this. Mm. See, the mistake that was made with the Western world and how they were thrown off is they went the way of the bit when the other side of the world, the other mm. superpower, went the way of the atom. And when they went the way of the atom, mm, it was mm -hmm. so much more. So, because obviously you see even the Western culture, it's going the way of the bit. Everything is just the computers and data. And we know damn well this AI cannot beat no real human. It's just not possible. Like put a human on DMT in front of him then and see what happened. You know what I mean? Like, you know, don't, just, don't put some <laughs> ultra right brain or left brain logical person there. You know what I'm saying? It's like, give it a real shot. But that's what I'm saying. That's the, the beauty of this. We have all of this time to be together, to do the cleanup process of our oceans, to see the corals come back, to be out there scuba diving, hanging out with the dolphins, really seeing what the does, because now you've gotten your vibration right to where you can speak that language. You see what I mean? It's like opening it up. That's why I say it's the great opening. This is like, I spent aeons waiting on this. And all I am is a weapon of mass creation. So we on point. <laughs> mm, I love it, man.